So, good day again, cadets. Again, I'm Sergeant Iselia Almonte, Reserve Philippine Army. And here is our last topic, our uh, military justice. So, as shown in the table of contents, we have six topics. The military justice, military jurisdiction, person subject to military law, role of courts, martial, and other tribunals, Definitive Articles of War and the Article of War 105. So, Military Justice. Military Justice is the system for enforcing discipline and administering criminal law in military establishment. Under the broad concept, rules governing the conduct of military personnel and providing for a method by which person who break them may be punished are contained in the Articles of War, the Manual for Court Martial, the Constitution of the Philippines, and pertinent laws. So, military jurisdiction. The military law emanates from several sources, among which are the Constitution of the Republic and international law, some specific provisions of the Constitution granting some powers to Congress, and in the authority vested, the President of the Philippines as Commander-in-Chief of all Armed Forces. So, military jurisdiction is exercised by a belligerent state occupying an enemy's territory by governing temporarily, governing the civil populace through its military forces without authority of a written law as necessity may require and by the government in the execution of its authority over the military as conferred by a branch of municipal law. Each exercise is carried out by, by the following agencies. The court martial, the commanding officer, courts of injury, and the military tribunals or commissions. So what are the persons subject to military law? As a general rule, court martials have the exclusive jurisdiction over all persons subject to military law who commit an offense penalized by, by the punitive articles of war. Persons subject to military law refer to the following. First is the all officers and listed personnel in the regular force of the armed forces of the Philippines. Next is the all reservists from the date of their call, of, a call to active duty and while on such active duty. Next is all trainees undergoing military instructions. Fourth is all cadets of the Philippine Military Academy and Philippine Air Force Flying School and probationary lieutenants on actual training. Next is the replainers to camp and all persons accompanying or serving with the AFP in the field, in the field of war or when martial law is declared and last, all persons under sentence a judge by a court martial or military tribunal. So, military jurisdiction over a person is terminated upon discharge or separation from the service. However, jurisdiction of a court martial as to offense is not automatically terminated upon discharge or separation in the following instances. First is the cases of fraud or embezzlement. Next is where a discharge or a separation is obtained through fraud. The discharge or separation may be cancelled. An individual is arrested and returned to military school. Next is where a soldier's discharge or separation does not interrupt his status as a per person subject to military law. So, when a person subject to military law commits or is charged with a serious military offense, he or she shall be placed in, co in confinement or in arrest as, is our, as, sorry, as circumstances may require. Arrest in the sense means taking into custody of someone by legal authority when charged with a minor offense only. Only such person shall not ordinarily be placed in confinement. Arrest or confinement may be deferred until arraignment and failure to arrest 
or confine a person does not affect the jurisdiction of a court martial. So the following pers uh, the following classes of persons subject to military law shall be placed in arrest and confinement as follows. First is the enlisted person by uh, by officers only in person through other persons subject to military law or by oral written orders or communication. And second is the officers or prob probationary lieutenants and cadets by commanding officers only a person through other officers or by oral and written orders communication the authority to be to place such person under arrest confinement cannot be delegated so where any subject where any person subject to military law is placed under arrest or confinement immediate steps are taken either it prefer charges against him with a view to bringing him to trial and carry the case to a final conclusions, or dismiss the charges and subsequently release him. But who may initiate or prefer the charges against erring military man? So the following classes of person who may initiate or prefer the charges against an erring military man, they are as follows. First is anybody whether subjects to military law or into, may give information to military authorities concerned that an offense is supposedly committed by a person subject to military law. So next is any person subject to military law may prefer charges against a military offender, although he is under arrest or confinement. Okay. So, where no formal investigation is conducted, the charges are referred to an investigating, investigating officer. This officer conducts the investigation to determine whether a prima facie case exists. The report of investigation is submitted to the Staff Judge Advocate, or SJA, for his study or advice. If it is determined that no prima facie case exists to warrant trial by court-martial, the case either dropped or some other appropriate actions is taken. On the other hand, where the staff judge advocate determines that there is prima facie case, he recommends to the commanding officer exercising court-martial jurisdiction to referral of the case to a court-martial for prosecution. The action of commanding officer on a case disposable by operation of article of article of war 105 shall be discussed under a separable subtopic of this chapter so the commanding officer appoints a court martial to try the case once the trial is terminated and results in the conviction of the accused the sentence as a judge is ordered promulgate until it's fully served If, on the other hand, the trial ends in the acquittal of the accused, he is immediately ordered, released from the confinement, and restored to military duty. So next is the role of court martial and other tribunals. So court martials and other military tribunals generally exist to assist commanders in the administration of military justice. Speci specifically, they are established to enforce discipline in the military establishment and to serve as deterrents to military crimes and offense. And by the very nature of the conduct of trial, this court martial and other military tribunals, he send the administration of military justice. Let us look into the jurisdiction as to person offense and punishment of each of the three types of court martial to subs substantiate the contention just cited. So, for instance, a general court martial has jurisdiction over all commissioned officers and other persons subject to military law 
who commit an offense capital in nature and whose possible sentence or punish punishment includes death. Dismissal or dishonorable discharge from the service. Total forfeiture to pay allowances or confinement at hard labor. Hard labor. So, in the Philippines, a general court-martial can impose the following. Deprivation of liberty on shore, solitary confinement not exceeding 30 days, and solitary confinement on diminished rations not exceeding 230 days. So, thus, thus, we can see that since officers are subject to trial to a general court-martial, this thought alone constitutes a more tedious legal, legal process to serve the ends of justice. So, this compounded by the nature of the offense and the punishment to be meted out. So, special, a special court-martial, on the one hand, on one hand, has the exclusive jurisdiction to try all other persons subject to military law accepting officers for those not capital in nature and whose probable sentence includes confinement not exceeding to six months and reprimand admonition and demotion in rank the proceedings conducted are not as tedious as for as those for a general court martial So, an entirely different case would be the trial by a summary court-martial where its proceedings are much faster than those of the other types of court-martial. So, uh, okay, so going to the punitive article so far. As gleaned from historical records, the Articles of War were promulgated effective September 14, 1938, when the unicameral Philippine National Assembly enacted Commonwealth Act No. 408, which became the basic law that gave the guidance in the operations of the country's armed forces, <coughs> Excuse me, then known as the Army of the Philippines. Then as now, there are 120 articles, most of which were lifted from the U.S. Uniform Code of Military Justice. It is for the reason that our Articles of War had the same substance as the American Military Code of 1928, which was found applicable of Philippine conditions. So, of the 120 Articles of War, 52 are considered as the punitive because they, spec they specify that punishment is to be imposed for each military offense committed. Articles of War 54 to 105 inclusive are the punitive articles. So there are two broad categories of crimes or offenses included in the puni punitive articles of war and these are first is the crime or offenses that are similarly within the within in the contemplation of the revised Pen penal code of the Philippines. Next is the offenses that are strictly classified as purely military. <laughs> so, lastly, is the Article of War 105. In making decisions, uh, I'm sorry, so this a particular article of war empowers commanding officers of units to punish personnel under them for minor offenses without the intervention of a court martial. This is the most expeditious way of disposing minor cases without necessarily sacrificing the ends of justice and military discipline. Whether an offense is minor or serious one, it is often a matter of judgment on the part of commanding officers. So, in making decisions pursuant to Article of War 105, commanding officers are guided by the following factors. Nature and circumstances attendant to the offense, effect of the punishment on the unit as a whole, and manner by which the offense is customarily punished by the military.
So the following are considered as serious military offenses. First, the offense involving moral turpitude. Next is the offenses with specific or mandatory punishment based on the punitive articles of war. Next is crimes or offenses calling for the imposition of the death penalty. Next, the other offenses where the judgment or sentence of the confinement in a penal institution is called for. So, under Article of War 105, commanding officers are authorized to impose the following penalties under their broad disciplinary powers. The admonition, reprimand, suspension of privileges for a period not exceeding one week, extra fatigue, not exceeding one week, hard labor without confinement, not exceeding one week for private and private first class, and any combination of penalties just cited, not exceeding one week. So, this authorized punishment may be imposed only when the offender do not demand trial by a court-martial. This is a basic requirement to be met before any form of punishment can be imposed. Once an accused demand trial by court-martial, the necessary charges are preferred for a trial by a court-martial vested with competent jurisdiction. Okay, so again, that's all. Very short lang ang ating military justice. Okay, so uh, review, uh, kindly review those three topics, the Philippine military history, Philippine military organization, and the military justice. So good luck on your exams. Thank you again. God bless.